Stay tuned. The for... three part divorce recovery survival guide part two. The middle stage. Like I said, stay tuned for part two of your divorce recovery survival guide. And she's whistling. That's okay. Look at my little baby. Welcome to the Divorce Devil Podcast, a show tailor made for those stepping out of the divorce recovery space. Follow your hosts, David and Rachel, as they dive into the all too familiar shitstorm of the more than interesting end of the road divorce topics, stories, and discussions. While realizing it can be a trying stage, they have been where you are and understand the struggle. And yes, the struggle is real. They know that recovery can be such a clusterfuck. Check out the podcast if you feel like you're juggling chainsaws, then strap in and hold on for some honesty, authenticity, and hard in your face irrefutable truths. This innovative podcast is not for the faint hearted. So if you can't handle the certain truths, just keep it moving. If you can, welcome to the show. But yes, welcome everybody out there to Divorce Devil episode 186. Like I said, this is the second um, part of your divorce recovery uh, survival guide. Yeah. The last time we talked about some of the things we talked about, which is interesting, I have it right here. We talked about uh, be cordial, stop the pettiness, try all the sugar cereals, own your own shit, don't use kids as pawns, give me no. But. Uh, collateral damage, consequences for your actions, pay attention, don't go back for the last dip in the pool. Yeah, no. Yeah, no. Even though it might be familiar, it's still. Just because game. it's warm in there doesn't mean it's. Good. Yeah. So today we're talking about the middle sides, the middle part. So that's when the shit gets real. Yeah. Yeah. That's when it the shit is the pain. That's you know that your court date's coming up. You have to finalize your parent course that you have to take here in Colorado. You're it di- sucks. You're dividing all this stuff up. One of you have probably moved out, or you are looking for something, some place to live. You've either had to divide up the cars and the all the assets. You're starting to see the light, but then you get sucked back into, okay. It becomes really real. If you have to negotiate in court because you can't get along, it can go on for a long time. If the monetary end of it isn't copacetic for both parties, yes, yes. Um, you may have to go back to court a couple of times. You may have to have a mediator. You may have to have, you may have to get a new divorce lawyer. And sometimes you, it, what she's saying is it doesn't go quick. Mm-mm. Yeah. And I think people, there's a lot of planning to get married. There's a lot of shuffling and planning and seeing what works and what doesn't work. You don't get, you don't get a trial run for your wedding. You have a lot of times where you, you have try a rehearsal something. dinner. Rehearse, That's rehearse. the night before, yeah. but okay. hopefully the wedding is planned, right? You got all that stuff planned. You have a divorce planned, mm-hmm. but leading up to it, all the shit happens. But what happens if you have a pre divorce, uh, you know, like a, I don't know, I'm talking about all the parts of the divorce, not just partying to yeah. celebrate, but, but like pulling the trigger and see what would happen if you pull the trigger now. This makes no sense. Anyway, it just sounds good. Yeah. Yep. And I think a lot of people do that, though, in the sense where let's try a separation. Because if mm-hmm. we tried a separation, and at one point, you know what, this isn't going to be. No, I'm sorry. What, what does a separation do? I've never understood that. I think it, 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 it gives you a softens pause. softens the blow a, a little bit. Okay. Because the divorce word was and is like that sting. Yep. We're going to see, we're going to trial run the divorce. <laughs> How? We had a legal separation <laughs> signed. We were starting to figure out like how our lives. I wonder separately. how many people do a legal separation and end up getting. That should be a good question. I don't know. I, wonder I, would, I, I would, would say probably ten, twenty percent. Yeah, I, I'm gonna Google that. But yeah, why you're gonna Google AI? Now? Gonna, yeah, but why do you even if you know it ain't working? That's just me though. Yeah, I think too. That might even be the we're getting separated. I'm not playing anymore. Mm-hmm. We may not want to get divorced, but you either change or we're going to get divorced. So it's like a shot over the bow. Or, yeah, it's don't test me now because I've already said we're getting separated. Or I'm not joking. Like, I'm so unhappy. This shit's for real. Yeah. We're past all the points. 
maybe the separation is like, oh, she means business or he means business. Mm-hmm. Maybe now I'll go to therapy. Maybe now I'll talk about it. Maybe now I'll communicate. Maybe now I won't be an asshole. But I believe generally it leads to divorce. But I don't know. It's got to be know. a low number. I don't know the statistics. It's got to be a low Because why is it an option? Yeah. Because what makes you it know, different? You don't have a trial marriage. You kind of do. Living together. But it's different, though. Yeah. Let's get married for for three months and, and see if it works, and then we'll get real married. Oh, so like you have a you have a permit, and then you have a license. <laughs> you get a marriage permit. You get a marriage <laughs> permit. And you gotta prove that you're a good husband. That you're wife. good enough to be married in the end. Yeah. Oh, you gotta damn. be permitted. So when we get the permit. It's kind of the side picture. We get the real wedding. You, the wedding pictures are from the side. <laughs> but once you get the real marriage, then you get full thing. Yeah, and is it yeah. like when you're like a, a minor where yeah, it's longer, yes, yes. portrait instead of landscape? Oh, yes, so <laughs> I, I want to be landscape, okay? I want my picture to be landscape. I'm, I'm working for the landscape. Yeah, but but, but maybe, do you have to be landscape to be landscape? That's pretty interesting. We should, we should, we should uh, visit that, you know, like a pre-marriage. What is your checklist for be, your permit? Do you have to have 60 hours of sex? <laughs> <laughs> Riding the course? I, I was riding have, the car. Do you have to have a combined have, bank have, account? You have to go to the high school parking lot. <laughs> you get a promissory oh, ring? Promissory ring. Oh, yeah. You don't get a real diamond. You get a promissory ring. Is it? It's like a promissory note, but it's a ring. So you know, like when you're driving, yeah. you have the instructor has the wheel. <laughs> and <laughs> hey, yeah. and, and everybody needs to learn on a stick. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Apple. You gotta ride the stick a little bit. Ride the stick. You gotta be able to ride that clutch. <laughs> but I should learn on a clutch. You gotta know how to change the oil. So <laughs> and change that tire. You can't get a tire while you're doing it. Oh, I, I think one of the funniest things was I was teaching. You know, I love the middle kid. Middle kid syndrome is big. Uh, and I was teaching him how to how to drive. And, and we were in the, we were in Lewis Palmer parking lot. Oh, nice. And uh, so I drive over. It's the first time he, and, and, and he gets behind the wheel. And he goes, what are those pedals for down there? What did you think? It was like, oh, I, was I, was like, like I, was, I was like, man, we in trouble. We are doing Minecraft we driving. You think, use your mind and it goes. Oh, my God. Yeah. So so you need to learn what, what the, pedals are, the pedals are for. <laughs> I like that, man. We should, we should do a pre-wedding divorce, checklist. I mean, or, yeah. or even a pre-divorce checklist. A divorce permit. Divor- oh, damn. It's, but it's like a separation. It's the same kind of thing. Divorce right. permit. But yeah, well, we need to shake it up a little bit. Though. We need to add some shit to it. Yeah. To make it like really we need to powerful. make a We need to make a permit manual. <gasps> divorce permit. Because you have to read your manual. manual. Yeah. Your marriage yeah. permit and your... Divorce permit. I think one of the things is. You and then you gotta take a test. You need to go and get some strains to make sure that that you're not missing anything. <laughs> when you get your license, you need to check up all yeah. these. Oh, you yeah. gotta try. Wait, is and that there's a guy with a button button up shirt and he goes, "Hey, I, I want to make sure that you that you're ready for this the pre divorce uh, permit." <laughs> Sorry, folks, man, we're having a good time. Oh my god. You've had the test. Three uh, cereals. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I failed again. I couldn't get divorced. God, I damn. failed. I'm stuck with her ass. I got 80% on that kind of thing. <laughs> I can't fail it. Okay, what the 80, hell? 80 is good. It's the opposite. It's going to be the opposite. opposite. You need to have zero, zero. in order to <laughs> so get the divorced. Opposite. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So you must <laughs> fail everything. Fail it all. I'm so smart. Oh. Look at me. Marriage permit. Divorce, divorce permit. permit. I don't know what I'm doing with my arms over here. Anyway, chicken wings. So back to the middle. It's just a shit show. Things are real. They're intense. Uh, you need to stay the course. Uh, don't the emotions run high, and the, you can't control the other person's emotions. You can only control yours. Mm-hmm. So if you don't take it up to a ten, and they're up to a ten. Eventually, they come down to a five. I think too. Oh my god! I totally lost my train of thought. That's all right. The light. It was the light. The light. Hey, I see the rain. Here I am. Look into the light. <laughs> no, run. I I remember now. I think in the middle is. When you actually, you, I can remember because the beginning, I don't remember a lot of shit that happens and timelines and how the chronologically, how things happen. It all kinds of just mushed together yeah. now like that. Everything but the kitchen sink, pizza, mm-hmm. all the things. And of course, everything but the kitchen sink, uh, kitchen sink divorce. Yeah, kitchen sink, yeah. yeah. 
to get everything but the kitchen sink. Yeah, yeah I got a know. kitchen sink, but not a house. I think the middle is where I had my first, I'm getting divorced. Mm. Right? Because now you're just trying to like, it, it was more get all your ducks in a row and yeah. make sure you're doing this. And it looks different than the marriage, but it still looks similar because you were still married. And then the middle of it's, I have a court date on this day. This is going to happen. I need to yeah. arrange to be off of work. I need to do this. I need to do whatever. Mine was COVID, so I wasn't working and nobody was working. But I think it's the first time you're like, oh, this is my new life. I think it's going to be tough about that bell curve. Mm -hmm. And and in the beginning is like the, the upslope mm -hmm. and the ends of downslope. But at the top of that bell curve, man, that's when this shit is real in your face, tense. Yeah. You have to chill. You can't respond to everything. Um, you should hit different. Uh, I think that's when you're at your, even though you're at the height of yeah. it, you're at your lowest point yeah. because I said I was drinking, I wasn't sleeping, I wasn't eating, I wasn't doing any of the things that you need to do Correct. to survive. But yet I was surviving how I needed to get through it. And good, bad, and different. I can't go back and change how I did it. I can learn from it and I can know I have a limit. Like I and, and you can podcast on it. Yeah. And again and anybody else going through it say, Hey guys, this is normal. And yeah. and all that crap is normal. Yes. Yeah. That's, that's the one thing. That you feel that you're the only person ever gone through yeah. it and you feel that is not normal, but millions of people's going through it and it's so normal. And we say too, David and I are both divorced. We've been divorced a little bit longer. I'm, I'm divorced. I'm a girl. He's a boy. He, his spouse pulled out the rug. I left. So we have different normals, but it's normal, the feelings we were feeling. And I respond to things different than David does. And, you know, he just tells me to stop doing it where I'm like, why? But why? And I like that. No, it's not healthy, but why? And so my whys were so loud that I'm like, why am I going through this? I wasn't the asshole. Why am I going through this? Someone else caused this. Someone else yep. did this. Someone else made me do that. Or someone else made me leave because they obviously didn't care about me. And so I think what happens is you like, I'm, I'm the only one that has a mother-in-law like this or a situation like this or this. But you're not, but man. You're when you not. talk to people, just talk to one person that's going through something similar like, uh -huh. You're like, damn, your shit is yep. screwed. And yep. we, I've talked about too that support group I went to. It was like 20 people talking about things. I'm like, oh, damn, mine's not that bad. But yep. I don't want to feel happy for them, but like happy for me because they, I got such a shitty. But everything was relative. Yeah. And then my, my story is I've been through a lot of shit. And I think because of that, I'm is able to process divorce differently and a lot of times i didn't talk about all the shit because i didn't know i had the problem until david asked me what topic we're talking about and Bam. you may have uh a for instance coming in and as you're telling your story you're like the light goes off and you're like huh i could have probably handled that better but right now i'm just gonna vent because i have a podcast and i can and i'm just mm -hmm. gonna tell you my shit so your shit sounds less or my situation might be so crazy that you're like god damn like my, I'm just getting, I'm just getting divorced. You don't have all the extra. Yeah. And so I think sometimes the funny stories will help you be like, oh, hell yeah. Those are the best. They get you through the, this is terrible. I don't know how I'm going to survive. I don't know how I'm going to get up in the morning or why would I want to get up in the morning and have to do this again tomorrow? Because you have purpose, you have worth. Yep. You are valuable to somebody else, even though the person you picked in your marriage is no longer that person. If I you was thinking enough. about thinking about my friend, yeah, and and I think that self doubt was huge. You could talk yeah. yourself. I'm not worthy. I'm not pretty. Oh, the rabbit hole is deep. Yeah, yeah. I think the rabbit because you're so high on that bell curve. Yeah. the rabbit hole is so far down to the. Oh, the, the rabbit line. hole is yeah. fucking Alice in Wonderland rabbit. I think it's below that. They're all crazy, and you're like yeah. looking up, going, "I wish I was just that crazy." Yeah. And then you're like, "Oh, I'm in the middle of this crazy." And then you're like, "Oh, look, I'm getting better. I can see the surface." And then nope, right back down. Yeah. So it really is. I feel like so many things in our life, we're a character in someone else's story. Yeah. At some points, we're the princess, we're the greatest thing ever, and then a lot of times we're the villain. And it's so okay to be cool. someone's villain. If you know your truth and if you may have been the villain at one point in their story so they can heal, good for them. 
Yep. Because the people that care and that matter, I love Dr. Seuss and his saying where those that matter don't mind and those that mind don't matter. We really have to, in the middle of it, in this step two, you really have to find your people. You have to find those that like, even if it's five minutes of their time to check in and say, hey, how you doing today? I was thinking about you. Keep it simple. Even if you're not getting that, be that for someone else. And I think that, I think it comes back to you. So in the middle too, I, I I think the small things are magnified. So the small things oh, that people yeah. do for you are, are like, hey, they call me, they care about me. Someone they, left me a milkshake. Yeah. You don't you don't realize that until yeah. someone does something for you and or you do something for yeah. the uh, for the person too. Yeah. But it's and the blame game, man. That that yeah. starts too. The middle part, the blame game is hard. But the least you play that game, the better because you can talk yourself into blame. I think blame that's blame. a big deal for a lot of people. If I don't think that one person is the absolute cause of it, but one person felt less than and may have been the cause of it after. That is a big deal where you're like, I, it's my fault. And the opposite of that is the why question. Yeah. Oh yeah. my God. That I eat you up for. Yeah. I, I had a friend. What did I do? I thought I was a great person. I thought whatever. And I wasn't enough. But. I, I had a true friend Yeah. where she left him a note. On the kitchen table, and said, "Hey, we get divorced," and he never heard why. All these mm-hmm. years, and, and 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 that bugged him, and he finally let it go a, a couple years ago. Well, and I think that goes back to grief too. If you've had, you think about unsolved mysteries, right? Mm-hmm. A lot of the times, if you don't know okay. why someone passed away, that would sit with you more than the passing away. There was a murder, or yep. there was this, or they had a heart attack, but there was no autopsy, and there was no signs of it, and they had no medical rest of it. Or there was an aneurysm and there's no history of it. And you're like, you won't know that unless you get a medical report. And if you don't choose to do that and it's days later or months later, you, you could know. always be wondering what happened. And so I think with divorce too, you, you there's a lot of times when you're alone and you're sitting in it. You're sitting in your grief. And at some point, depression can kick in, right? I also am a big believer that Just because you're depressed doesn't mean you have depression. And I think we all, a lot of, especially in the medical field, a lot of times everybody, it's because you're super sad, you're Mm -hmm. depressed. You can be depressed without a diagnosis of depression. You can just be really sad for a long period of time or a period of time because of a situation. Depression is, you know, you have an imbalance of chemicals and all the things and all the stuff. This is an imbalance of your life. And so... We come, sometimes get stuck in the middle of, I need a diagnosis to know that I'm okay, blah, blah, blah. Well, mm-hmm. you know, you need to know who you are to be like, hey, I might need medical help or medical attention or therapy or whatever, but it's okay to be sad more than one day. It's okay to cry. It's okay to be angry. It's okay to be like, what the fuck next? It's okay to take time off of work if you're going through a divorce and you just can't go to work and be functional. But I, in my personal going to work helped because then I had a purpose of doing something. And yes, I cried in the closet and yes, I cried in my office. And yes, I went to my friend and going, I don't know what I'm thinking. I can't think straight. Can you help me? And asking for help, whether it's a small task or a large task is okay. And you may not get that large task fully help, but there's steps of you finishing that task. What about uh, learning to be alone? That's a big one. Oh, that is a hard one. That's huge. That's a, because you've been with that one person forever and now you're all alone. When you have a kid, it's fine. But when you don't have a kid, it's just like that void. Yeah. And I think too, I think I talked about this last week was I didn't realize how much childhood shit I had. Mm-hmm. And I don't want to say trauma because it was just how I perceived what my life was as a kid. And I processed it however my experience was, which... Again, I can't blame anybody. My parents, a lot of times I blamed other people for me having to grow up super quick and take care of a family that needed me more than they could, than they could take care of me emotionally and whatever. And so it wasn't until I got divorced where I was talking about something. I was like, that has nothing to do with him. That has to do with the relationship I had at 17. Or the relationship I had with my best friend at up 12. It's all intertwined. Or the bullies that were in fourth grade. Like all these things that happen to us, that happens to people. Mm-hmm. 
I just was pushed down because I'm like, oh, I'm a nice person, I'm a nice person, I gotta be a nice person, I gotta be a nice person. And then one day I was like, fuck you all. You guys were not nice to me, so I don't have to be nice. And then it came off as, oh, she's unapproachable. No, I am very approachable. But once you wrong me, I'm going to hold a grudge because that's in my DNA. My mom and her family were big on grudges. There are family members that didn't Stay. talk to each other for 30 years because they brought, McCoy's, the, baby. they brought the wrong salad to the barbecue. You know? yeah. So I think, too, when you're going through this, you really will see all the things that have that make you up and who you are. And sitting in your space alone is very helpful. And I think that's why journaling was good. so good Learn, for me. Learning how to be alone. Because in yeah. my brain, regularly, ADHD brain, I got 900 things happening on here. Half of them, I'm just talking to myself and my other personalities and hoping that a squirrel interrupts. Sybil. Sybil exactly. squirrel. So if I write it in like a calm space, I know I'm writing my feelings and how I was feeling. And I, was, back and check. I was sad and I was writing this and I was thinking about I'm a mom and I didn't really have a great mom role model. So it brought out a lot of things that I was able to feel from past, from, you know, I'm 50. There's a lot of shit. Yep. And so I think in the middle of it, if, if you can be in your own space, you cry in the shower. That, that mm -hmm. was a big one. Like, I'm just going to cry in here because I'm like, it out. It just looks like I am got out of the shower. So I think owning self-care is part of yep, being alone go. and taking care of yourself. Go to the movies by yourself. Go get a massage. Go do this. Go for a walk. Go do something for you. Start doing your hobby again. Start doing things that you loved before you fell into this sadness. So, yeah. David, you started biting bikes and pickleball and all things. and Yeah. Go out and serial date. That's a good time to serial date. Mm -hmm. I'm kidding, folks. Don't do it. Yeah, but don't make it don't like a it. permanent box. Try not to do that Explore right Explore your there. boxes. Yeah. And, and I knew you were going to explore some boxes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Different things, hobbies. They don't Hobby have to boxes. be sugary yeah. or have the extra frosting dig on them. <laughs> dig them, dig them. Blah, blah. Yeah. So let's close it out. So what's your most important point you want to tell them about the middle? The middle. Mine is take care of yourself and don't. God, man, we have got a lot of laughter. Oh, yeah. yeah. Laugh at yourself. It's stupid. really hard. Like in the beginning, it's really hard yeah. to laugh because you don't see like the humor in any of it. Because like, that's some humor, humor shit. Man. Then when you go back and you're on a podcast and you tell them about your stories, oh my god, that was really funny. Like my okay, friend, hey, my friend, this happened to him this one time. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and I think it's probably been a long time, but I can visibly remember in the middle going out with a friend and laughing for the first time and being like, I was like, oh my gosh, I, I can't laugh. I'm going through divorce, mm -hmm. but. It's funny because I was relaying a story and I was just like, really? Did that just happen? What the hell? This can't be my real life. So I have to laugh because if not, I'm going to cry. And so I think a lot of times humor is a really big part of it. But I think in this storm, find the center and find your center and try to heal from inside out. Because oh, that's the, interesting. the quicker that you get out of the eye, the eye is where it's calm. So get the acinophils and everything to heal this gap. Yeah, start healing all your parts and it's going to be slow. And you might find someone in the middle, a new person in the middle and you like them and doing all things. And then they might have lied to you about having a DUI. And then you're like, what the fuck? You're a fucking piece of shit. And then it goes on from there. And then you meet this guy who's super awesome and you've been together for four years. Yeah, you might do that. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right, everybody. Yeah. That was a quickie. Humor. Ooh, and quickies are good quickies. too. But I still like the divorce uh, permit. Permit. Divorce. Permit. I think we should start marriage permits and divorce permits. I take a live, test for each. Living together is like a. a yeah, but before you permit. sign that marriage certificate, ah, you here's my name. A, you need to You're sign like, a Yes, permit. I tried six positions. Yes, I've done this. Yes, I road tested that thing a couple times. <laughs> what? <laughs> we have. We share a bill together. We know what our finances are. You are independently financed and I'm independently financed. And here's our things. And here's the things we're going to do together. And here's the things we're not going to do. Are we going to go to church? Maybe not. These, these are the rules. These are the, the rules. marriage permit rules. And then the divorce permit so rules. The, so the, you need a hundred on your marriage one. So it's you almost like a right? prenup, but it's a prenup of, of values. Yeah, not of money. Yeah. The value. Premium. Maybe they need to have a pre-child one too. 
Just Jedi, saying. Pre child. There'd be no children. Pre, pre animals. There'd be no children. Pre house. There's so many different permits. Permits. permits per you need a permit married. to build a fence. You need a permit yeah. to get yeah. married. Oh, yeah. And divorce and have a child. We're yeah. just making up all the rules now because yeah. we can. I'm 50 and I don't give a fuck. <laughs> all right, everybody. It's a Friday. Nope. No, Thursday afternoon. Yeah, I told you. This yes. has been the longest week ever. Yeah, but you guys have a good night. Talk to you. Love you. Love you. Bye. Bye.